the present topic of discussion it is on allergic and immunologic diseases of oral cavity so here uh, the diseases which occur they will be as a result of a reaction of our body's immune system to various substances like it can be infections or non infectious agents and some of the agents can be in the form of uh, like uh, they can be having genetic basis also so these are various allergic and immunological diseases of diseases now we'll in this topic we'll be discussing some of the important ones of which the first one is recurrent after stomatitis wherein it is also called as after ulcers or canker sores these are the other names which are given for recurrent after stomatitis canker sores or after ulcers so what happens in this after ulcers is that there will be development of painful ulcerations within the oral mucosa as you can see in the picture so what is the main what are the main causes of these recurrent after stomatitis that is etiological factors so there are numerous uh, etiological factors which are suggested of which the first one is bacterial infections so here among all the bacteria one important bacteria which is said to be associated with the after ulcers is streptococcus alpha hemolytic streptococcus that is streptococcus sanguis so wherein uh, actually it occurs as an immunologic hypersensitivity reaction that is as a t cell mediated response to this bacteria wherein there can be cross reaction which can occur between streptococcus and our oral mucosa so as it is a cross reaction right so in, uh, instead of killing streptococcus it will cause mucosal damage here okay next is genetic history so here uh, other, uh, like rather than infectious agent they say like uh, there is a positive family history wherein the involved gene is hla b51 that is genetic history and sometimes there can be nutritional deficiencies also like that of uh, iron deficiency vitamin b12 deficiency and folic acid deficiency but various uh, studies have told that rather than uh, like uh, these diseases being primary cause they act as uh, synergistic factors to other uh, etiological causes okay uh, next is endocrine conditions these recurrent after stomatitis is most commonly seen in females so that to females with in menstrual period or during pre menstrual period or uh, during post ovulation period they say like after ulcer formation is high during these uh, periods so like they said like uh, the after ulcers and the level of progesterone within the blood they are directly proportional to each other resulting in after ulcers so this is about endocrine conditions next is allergic factors wherein anything like asthma hay fever or any food or drug allergies can elicit an allergic phenomenon resulting in after ulcers next is these after ulcers can be part of systemic diseases also like uh, bechet syndrome cyclic neutropenia or magic syndrome wherein magic uh, in the sense major afters and generalized inflamed cartilage or pfa pa syndrome wherein it means periodic fever afte pharyngitis and cervical adenitis and sometimes it can be hiv infection also so these are the various systemic diseases next is psychic factors many people who are under uh, constant stress they also uh, can be seen uh, with a greater tendency of having after ulcer formation so these are the various etiological factors in causing recurrent after stomatitis next we shall see the clinical features of after ulcers so before going into clinical features basically the, these uh, recurrent after stomatitis it is divided into or it is classified into three varieties recurrent after minor recurrent after major and recurrent herpetiform ulcerations so if we see recurrent after minor first it is this is the one which is actually called as canker sore uh, wherein here we will see single or multiple uh, erosions on the oral mucosa which are covered by gray membrane as you can see in the picture and surrounding this gray membrane you can see that erythematous halo so this is a classic picture of recurrent after minor 
so whenever a single outbreak comes like uh, the lesions may vary from 1 to 100 and the size of each lesion can be uh, from 2 to 3 mm to over 10 mm in diameter okay and usually this uh, minor after uh, ulcerations they occur on labile mucosa that is movable mucosa that is buccal mucosa labial mucosa tongue soft palate which are not bound to underlying periosteum because that is how we differentiate minor from uh, herpes ulcers okay and whenever these ulcers form they stay for 7 to 14 days and then they heal spontaneously without any scar formation next is major after ulcerations wherein they are also called as Sutton's disease. Here what happens is that the individual lesion is quite larger than the minor afte and they also stay for longer duration also. And whenever a single outbreak happens, the number ranges from 1 to 10 and the size of each major after ulceration, it will be more than 1 centimeter and sometimes it can be more than uh, 3 centimeters in diameter also. And here also it occurs on labile mucosa and whenever it uh, comes it stays for 6 weeks and then it heals but heals with scar formation. And this is the uh, after ulcers which are most commonly associated with HIV infections. Next is herpetic ulcers. So as you can see that is the lateral border of the tongue wherein multiple small crops of ulcers. So too many ulcers are there in one area. So that is uh, often up to 100 in number it can occur. And each lesion can be around 1 to 3 mm in diameter. And it can occur anywhere within the oral cavity. And they heal within 7 to 10 days. So these are the various types of after ulcers. Next we shall see histological features. Here the histological features are not that conspicuous. So general features will be there. So if we take a biopsy of any after ulcer. So the super as it is ulcer right. So the superficial epithelium will show fibrinopurulent membrane. Whereas underlying connective tissue as it is an ulcer definitely inflammation will be there. So connective tissue shows dense inflammation that to chronic inflammation will be more. So, but there are different cytological features for this uh, recurrent after stomatitis. So, upon taking any smear and seeing it under the microscope, you can see some special cells called as Anishko cells here. So, wherein uh, as you can see in the picture, these cells, they consist of elongated nuclei which contains linear bar of chromatin and radiating process of chromatin towards the nuclear membrane. So these are called as Anishko cells having an elongated nuclei with linear bar of chromatin. So these Anishko cells they are very much specific for uh, after ulcers but can also be seen in sickle cell anemia, megaloblastic anemia, iron deficiency anemia and also in people receiving uh, chemotherapy for cancer. So these are the various uh, conditions wherein we can see Anishko cells. So this is about recurrent after stomatitis. Next we shall talk about Bechet syndrome. So this is a syndrome right. So it is multisystemic disease wherein the characteristic feature here are oral and genital after ulcers will be there along with arthritis and cutaneous lesions. These are the main features. Along with that we see ocular, gastrointestinal and neurological manifestations. But some authors they said like there is a triad for this Bechet syndrome uh, showing recurrent after oral ulcers, genital ulcers and ocular lesions. Okay. What is the main etiology behind Bechet syndrome? First is same like our after ulcers there is a genetic history that is positive family history of HLA B51 and also bacterial etiology of streptococcus sanguis as well as streptococcus oralis same like after ulcers and also some environmental factors that is any uh, uh, poisonings like uh, organophosphates, organochlorides, allergens or any heavy metal intoxication. Any of these environmental factors also can uh, stimulate Bechet syndrome. And sometimes some viruses are also there. So viruses like uh, hepatitis virus 
or parvo virus b19 these are the mainly said viruses which are uh, in the etiology of bechet syndrome now let's see the clinical features of bechet syndrome as i already told oral and genital ulcers are the main characteristic feature there are other features are also there so you can see here uh, main features are all given here oral and genital ulcers arthritis that is joint pain skin problems and ocular lesions so if you see oral ulcers they mostly resemble our uh, aphthous ulcers only that is a gray membrane with an erythematous halo and uh, they will be very much painful in nature and uh, next is genital ulcers wherein they will be smaller ulcers which are seen in and around the genitalia that is around scrotum around the labia majora like that next is skin problems wherein uh, there will be pustules and papules which are seen on trunk as well as limbs as you can see in the picture pustular lesion papulo pustular lesions can be seen next ocular lesions initially if it is mild then it results in photophobia and irritation but if it is becoming severe it can result in uitis and then hypopion which means pus within the eye so these are the severe uh, eye ocular manifestations as you can see in the picture so apart from these clinical features we can do some laboratory findings to find bechet syndrome so wherein many of these uh, uh findings they will be elevated like hypergamma globulinemia elevated leukocytosis elevated blood white blood cells eosinophilia increased uh, eosinophils elevated esr and there is one more feature uh, that is platelet rosette formation around neutrophils which is seen in acute phases that means platelet will be uh, formed surrounding this neutrophils you can see in this picture the circled one wherein there are two neutrophils around which there are those uh, pink pink cells right those are nothing but platelets which are arranged as rosette so this is about bechet syndrome next we shall talk about sarcoidosis so which is also called as beck's sarcoid so here what happens is that it is also a multi system disease but a granulomatous disease granulomatous in the sense there will be formation of granulomas where we see granulomas other in other diseases like tuberculosis okay so tuberculosis how is it different from tuberculosis then uh, so here the granuloma will not contain any caseous necrosis in sarcoidosis whereas tuberculosis shows caseation necrosis that is the main difference so if you see etiology behind sarcoidosis same like uh, uh, like tuberculosis only right here also infectious etiology will be mycobacterium and followed by propionibacteria and viral etiology like epstein barr virus and hhv8 and some environmental factors like um, that is inhalatory agents like wood dust pollen clay mold and silica any of these inhalatory agents can also result in sarcoidosis and sometimes there can be a genetic predisposition by having a positive family history of hla antigen so what will be the clinical features i told you it is very much similar to tuberculosis right so tuberculosis what happens lungs will be involved lymph nodes will be involved same like that here also there will be enlarged lymph nodes that to in and around lungs because of the inhalatory agents so resulting in hilar lymphadenopathy and pulmonary infiltration because of the pulmonary infiltration we have uh, pulmonary symptoms like dry cough will be there dyspnea will be there chest discomfort coughing up of blood these are the various symptoms which are seen within lungs there are skin symptoms that is cutaneous manifestations there can be rashes and lupus pernio what is lupus pernio it is violaceous indurated lesions that are seen on face lips and nose ears as you can see in the picture those are indurated lesions which are lupus pernio and the second picture shows erythema nodosum that is these are uh, nodular lesions which are seen on the extremities so those are skin manifestations other than that there are other manifestations like complications of uh, heart and there can be hepatomegaly or splenomegaly or joint pains resulting in arthritis these are the various 
systemic manifestations that are seen in sarcoidosis sometimes oral manifestations can be there resulting in macules and papules as you can see in both the pictures in the oral cavity there are erythematous macules within the palate as well as in the labial mucosa so this is about clinical features of sarcoidosis now let's see histological features initially itself i told you that it is a granulomatous disease so that so that means microscopic picture will be full of granulomas only like in tuberculosis so you can see in this picture those round round bodies you can see those are nothing but each individual granuloma so that is one granuloma like that so there are multiple granulomas so what does these granulomas contain epithelioid histiocytes surrounded by lymphocytes and also multinucleated giant cells that is langhans and foreign body giant cells will be there but there will not be any caseation necrosis like we see in tuberculosis so no absolutely no caseation necrosis and there are some other interesting features which are seen in sarcoidosis that is formation of asteroid bodies within the giant cells okay these are actually fragments of collagen which appear as star shaped bodies that is why asteroid bodies and one more feature is shaman bodies that are also seen in giant cells only these are uh, basophilic calcifications basically okay so this is shaman bodies so this is uh, histological features of sarcoidosis there is one more important skin test that can be done in sarcoidosis that is quaim silbach test which is an intracutaneous test like that of tuberculin test wherein we will inject a suspension of sarcoid into the skin to why this is done is to check uh, that is for early and accurate diagnosis of sarcoidosis and next important uh, disease is angioedema so this angioedema it is also called as angioneurotic edema or quinkies edema this these are various names for angioedema so name itself says edema that means some swelling so where this swelling occurs so edematous swelling will be seen in skin mucosal and submucosal connective tissue so why there will be this edema is like you know fluid accumulation right so there is some na pathogenesis that is occurring wherein it is resulting in this fluid accumulation so how is it is how is this fluid accumulation happening is because of the alterations in the vascular permeability so the blood vessels are becoming more permeable permeable okay resulting in movement of fluid to the interstitial spaces resulting in swelling okay so how this vascular permeability is happening is there are various reasons that is first is allergic angioedema so wherein any allergy to any drugs or food or anything it results in anaphylactic reaction anaphylaxis is ige mediated right so ige antibodies they bind to mast cells so whenever this food antigen comes and binds to uh, this ige antibody it results in degranulation of the mast cells so whenever this granules are released these granules have a tendency to cause increased vascular permeability resulting in edema that is one cause sometimes this vascular permeability can be because of uh, using ace inhibitors ace inhibitors are given for high treating hypertension right so these drugs they actually raise levels of bradykinin so this bradykinin has a vasodilating action so vasodilation is nothing but again vascular permeability will happen sometimes it can be because of activation of complement pathway also so some of the complement proteins like c3a c5b and all those they can also result in increased vascular permeability and one more important cause is by antigen antibody complexes so many at times this antigen antibody complexes they activate the complements only again so indirectly again alteration in vascular permeability so this is the pathogenesis of angioedema next we'll see what are all the clinical features so edema swelling so there will be uh, soft non tender swelling of uh, skin lips eyes etc so as you can see in the picture there is this uh, diffuse edematous swelling of both upper as well as the lower lip which can be seen and also in the second picture you can see there is a swelling of eyes also puffy eyes are there 
wherein even eyes appear they are shut so other than lips and eyes even hands arms buttocks all can show edematous swelling so sometimes there will be a feeling of tenseness or itching or prickly sensation which can result in articarial swelling so all these swellings what we have discussed till now they can be because of allergic angioedema but there is a situation wherein angioedema can be hereditary also so this hereditary angioedema will be very dangerous because it involves respiratory and git systems wherein uh, there will can be difficulty in breathing and sometimes vomiting and watery diarrhea which can be quite dangerous so this is about angioedema next and last of uh, allergic and immunologic diseases is vaginal granulomatosis wherein it is also a multi system disorder which involves vascular renal and respiratory systems mainly vascular renal and respiratory systems so what is the main uh, reason behind this granulomatosis of vascular renal and respiratory systems that is the pathogenesis is because of an abnormal immune reaction so this reaction is to some inhaled environmental age antigen or some infectious agent so this vaginal granulomatosis it is also because of some abnormal immune reaction but here we don't know what is this environmental antigen or infectious agent we don't know it is unknown but what we know is that uh, what is this abnormal immune reaction okay so what is this abnormal immune reaction our body will respond like so there will be formation of anca bodies a and c a bodies which is nothing but anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody formation so that is the main abnormal immune reaction so these anca bodies that is anti neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody they act against vascular renal and respiratory systems resulting in some clinical features so what will be the features there can be necrotizing granulomas of upper and lower respiratory tract or there can be necrotizing vascularity vasculitis sorry necrotizing vasculitis which affects both the small and medium sized vessels or it can be focal granul uh, glomerulonephritis which can affect the renal systems so these are the systemic manifestations of vaginal granulomatosis but what will be the oral manifestations so here the common and characteristic manifestation is seen in gingiva so where in the gingiva will become enlarged and will be granular so entire gingiva will be involved as you can see in the picture so this kind of appearance of gingiva that is friable granular and enlargement of the gingiva generalized enlargement of gingiva is called as strawberry gingivitis which is a peculiar feature of vaginal granulomatosis other than this there can be deep ulcerations which are seen involving the palate that can extend till nose and nasal septum and all other than this there can be spontaneous exfoliation of the teeth can be there and sometimes uh, there can be delayed or improper healing of the extraction sockets so these are the various clinical as well as oral manifestations next there are some laboratory findings which can be seen in vaginal granulomatosis like anemia leukocytosis elevated esr rate and as kidneys are involved there can be hematuria that can be seen and as it is an abnormal immune reaction we can see circulating immune complexes that is antigen antibody complexes can be demonstrated uh, using laboratory tests and what will be the histological findings so here the epithelium the superficial epithelium shows pseudo epitheliomatous hyperplasia so this can be done in oral biopsies okay so whereas connective tissue shows dense inflammation as you can see in the picture uh, wherein inflammation with multinucleated giant cells will be there so epithelium shows pseudo epitheliomatous hyperplasia and connective tissue shows dense inflammation with giant cells and this inflammation mainly contains eosinophils and lymphocytes so in the circled area you can see one big giant cell is there surrounding that there are pink pink cells which are nothing but eosinophils with lymphocytes so this is the main histological feature of vaginal granulomatosis and with this the very important allergic and immunologic diseases have been 
described here so what all we have discussed in this present topic we have discussed about uh, recurrent aphthous stomatitis which is also called as canker so where it is of three types and the characteristic cell here is anishko cell next is bechet syndrome wherein it is a mixture of uh, oral and genital ulcers and ocular ulcers next what we have seen sarcoidosis where it is a granulomatous disease without caseation next angioedema where there will be diffuse swelling of the uh skin mucosal and submucosal connective tissues next is vaginal granulomatosis wherein there will be involvement of vascular renal and respiratory systems so this is in brief about our uh, allergic and immunologic diseases of the oral cavity